Hello and welcome to this new video where we are going to review every shader that we use to create this stylized look in the Annie transformation. We're going to work in some of the things that are crucial to get this kind of look. I will tell you that this project was very complex but nevertheless I'm willing to share everything you want to know about the creation of this stylized shader. Now, everything that we have seen so far from the previous series in the channel have led us to this moment and this is just a wonderful opportunity to show how much you can create this kind of a style inside Blender and in the compositor. Check it out and don't miss it for the next upload. So if you like this kind of content, please check out all the other videos in my channel and please hit the subscribe button to get notified whenever I upload new videos. Attack on Titan, without a doubt, is going to go into anime history as one of the most uh, very crafty stories that we have seen in the latest years and I thought to pick up on the Annie Lionheart character because her arc is very complex she's very smart very keen she's got different powers combined from all the other titans and she's like the kind of soldier that you would expect in this kind of series so I decided you know what it's time to do some kind of um, approach for all of the techniques that the MAPPA studio was using and is currently using in their productions, in their 3D anime productions, which is what we would like to do here in the channel if this is the first time visiting. My name is Pierre Schiller, I am a 3D animator and VFX compositor with over 20 plus years of experience doing commercial works, cinema animations, advertising, even video games. And now I'm working with AR and VR filters as well as other interesting media things. But the one thing that I want you to take away in this video is that we're going to be replicating some of the techniques that we have seen that MAPPA is applying onto their productions. We're going to be returning to all of the MAPPA techniques or some of them later on the video. So we have the Annie Transformation File Blender version 292. But you can open this on 293 and you will significantly see a better performance on depth of field and also some of the shaders. So what we have here, it's um, a smoke, stylized smoke, that it's got its own collection and it's just a geometry with different displacements and modifiers such as this one right here, the displacement modifier and also the corrective smoothness modifier. Now the shader tree, it's, it's an interesting part here because as you can see, most of these techniques we have already covered from our previous um, series on stylizing shaders such as the light threshold. But the one thing that I want you to notice is that this shader has a double transparency shader. So once it's working for the actual transparency of the smoke and the other one is going to work with a mask. This nodes right here have the parameters to control the mask and let me show you how it works. The only thing that you need to worry about is to change this parameter that you see right here. So when you raise this number, the smoke is going to crawl or rather it's going to disappear. And when you set this parameter back to zero, you're going to get the smoke at full uh, display. So you can come here into the playhead, insert the keyframe by hovering this value, and then press I. And then you can move the playhead to another frame. And then you can slide by pressing shift and left mouse click left drag it to the left and then drag it to the right so that you can see that this is uh, appearing very slowly we have a mask that goes from the bottom to the top so you can control that value from this parameter here in the add mat node okay very really easy now if you want a more smooth smoke you can activate the subdivision modifier to, to one or two at the t render time so that you can get this smoke really really smooth okay it's looking great and I placed three more copies all around they all have their own collection which you can see on the outliner so you can activate it or deactivate it to make the viewport run faster my intention here was not to send it with subdivision modifier because when you play it back, it's going to be very slow on your system, and I did not know your system configuration, so therefore, I'm not including it, but I'm just, you know, letting you know that you can adapt your subdivision modifier so that you get smoother renders. 
Additionally, this method, this masking method, um, has been applied for almost all of the shaders that the female Titan and Annie model have. And as a curious thing, as a curious fact, I placed this node right here, which is called the hair color switch, which is just a hue saturation value for the hair material on the female Titan, which you can, you know, dial in and check out how many different color combinations your Titan could have. Also, you can raise up the emission, so it's going to be blooming into the viewport. You can render this out with transparency and it will work just fine from Blender 293. Now, let me save this and let me show you some other things that I prepared here. Now, the same principle is applied with the body in regards of creating a procedural shader that will drive the muscle strands. So the idea here is to generate noise from the normal texture coordinates and mix it just to slide 50-50 um, using this in a mix node mode from mix RGB as you can see right here and that is connected and feeding all the uh, local coordinates for the mapping. After that I connect, I connect a Musgrave texture, which you can raise or lower the values for the scale as well. If you want the muscle strengths to, you know, um, have some kind of variation. So you can play with that as well. You can make this uh, scale as well if you want more details. But in our case, I just did it so that you can understand some of the concepts that are being driven here. Uh, ever since I, w I saw the War Titan transform, I thought, you know what, that could be possible via uh, shaders. So <laughs> I tried to experiment some of that in here. Now, this is not a fully completed transform shader, but it gets us pretty far. So down here, again, we have the mask set up that, that it's correctly labeled here. And it's working with the emission shader at the same time, because what's the idea? The same thing that we presented with the smoke. Whenever you're in X frames, then you can dial in here in the mapping, as of course, uh, to to change the opacity of the mask. Okay, so the mask again goes from below all the way to the top by dragging this Y value here in the mapping texture. And one more thing before I forget, this amazing lightning effect was created by the shader developed by Christoph Didin. And he's got a Gumroad where you can download that specific shader and, you know, switch and turn around all of those colors and parameters. And it's a pretty lightning effect. If I can say it so, look at this. It looks marvelous in the scene. So kudos to Christoph Didin for such amazing shader. Also, the view render layers have been included as well so that you can output or render to different directories in your own machine. Right now, let me switch this to a compositor view. You can see here that all of my view layers have been separated and all of them have a write file node that are targeting my own machine. But you can target your own directories to get the render passes from any, from the background, the female titan, the race, and also the smoke. So we will cover render layers in the next segment. Um, render layers are very useful to separate your elements when you have a complex 3D scene. And this is very useful. This is uh, a necessary step when you're creating anime production in a professional level. I'm going to be explaining this from a very simplistic point of view, but this can get uh, very much layered, very much complex. So the render layers here in the compositor specifically have this uh, scene identification where you can see up here on the top window and then you have view layers. View layers are everything that you contain into that scene, specifically your collections that are going to be rendered with that scene's name. That scene's name is like a giant uh, uh, big box and all of the render layers are like the small drawers that go into that box to store your elements, your render, your passes. This is referred to in other softwares as render passes, okay? 
so you can uh, activate different properties for those passes but we're going to keep it simple right here I'm going to shift D duplicate this and then I'm going to be using the same scene but instead I'm going to be creating a new uh, background scene as you can see right here I duplicated uh, the, the I copied the properties for this view layer which basically have every collection visible and now I'm going to deactivate those um, other collections that I'm not interested in rendering in this specific uh, view layer so I'm going to switch that off so you can see it and this one I'm going to be moving it into another collection that I'm going to be naming race so that the background is the only visible layer selected in this view layer node okay so as you can see I have only two and now I have my background separated from my main scene so if I press F12 I will see Annie and then the background is going to be rendered alone look at that that is perfect we can take this further and then customize it on uh, an external editor or you can do that right here in Blender let's create another new layer by copying it the copying settings okay so now I'm going to rename it just by positioning my mouse over here and then typing the new name after that I'm going to switch everything off and now I only have Annie available so therefore I call this view layer Annie I'm going to shift D duplicate it again here in the um, make sure that you have film active of course otherwise you will not get the transparency and now uh, let's go back here into the Annie shift D I'm going to duplicate this rendered layer because I only want to visualize Annie so I'm going to go to the drop down menu select Annie and now I'm going to press F12 so that it will render the background plus Annie with transparency see how easy that is that's just blender it's fantastic now you can decide the format later on if you should decide to take this uh, to a an external editor We'll talk about that later. And make sure that every file that I rendered will be rendered to a specific location using file output. So I'm going to type file output by pressing shift A. That will take me to the search function. Shift A to add a new node. And then I'm going to type file output. Now, when you receive my file, uh, that is going to still be targeting my own machine, so make sure that you target your own correct path directory in order for you to have all of these passes separated, okay? You can also check here for colors, and the most important thing is that you come here into properties from the item tab and mark your name and specifically all of the other properties that you want with this. So I'm going to be renaming this by selecting it and then press F2 to rename and select or type rather background render. Perfect. So from here on you can select your format as whatever you want or you need and let me move this outside. I'm going to shift D duplicate this again connecting this. I'm going to rename this so I will not make a mistake. I'm going to target my directory and I'm going to create a new folder and inside that folder I'm going to be writing Annie so from here on RGBA transparency Annie renders are going to land into that folder I'll do the same thing with the rest of the view render layers for the female Titan for the race as well as the smoke the background and everything should be checked with transparency for you to compose for example in After Effects. So when you have all your renders completed after pressing F12 render animation sequence you're going to get the directories and inside that directory you're going to find another subdirectory with your names for the renders. So you import that into say After Effects you can apply looks you can uh, alter the filter that you, you're going to be using in this case I'm going to um, put this lens distortion which is very important one of the things that I find that not many artists do is to distort the lens camera for the final render and this is something that MAPA also does and not only that they also wiggle their lines when the characters are being animated in that animated render sequence that was astounding for me anyways Here's the result that you can get once you can 
compose your render passes into your compositor of choice. It could be Nuke, it could be After Effects, it could be Blender. Check this out, it looks amazing. Second thing I want to recommend, which really uh, um, put me to think a lot, was the settings options for the shader in the EV real time engine. It happens so that if you're using the blend mode, alpha blend, you're probably going to get that kind of ghosting for the uh, meshes that are intersecting each other. So my recommendation is that you, instead of using blend mode alpha, um, use, I'm sorry, blend mode alpha hashed instead of alpha blend. Okay, it's, this is very important. Please take notice on that. Whenever you're using transparency between meshes, 3D meshes, please use alpha hashed. Another cool thing that you may want to try is to uh, multiply the original base color t against the uh, cyan color like you're seeing here. That makes the, color, the yellow color and the red color appear much paler in a much pale fashion so that the titan, the female titan looks uh, resembling like the series. Now the final part, and this is very important, corresponds to Christophe Dedan's uh, amazing electrical shader, or rather ray shader, thunder shader, however you want to call it. It is just amazing. Please visit his, his Gumroad. Uh, Christophe Dedan uh, made this shader and it's really impressive. We only needed it for just a few frames. So what I did here was to apply the shader to all of these uh, grids, to all of these um, polygons, and then scale them and animate the, the, their scale. So on the previous frames, we set the scale to zero, so they will not be visible in the viewport. And when we move forward in time, I scale them back to their origi original size. Now this is important because you don't see the motion blur of the scale and even so if you would see it if you apply motion blur to the scene um, then you will get a natural reaction to the camera when the lightning is growing because literally when we look to lightning in the natural uh, nature <laughs> i'm sorry uh, it goes down all the way up and sometimes after the thunder hits you can see the rays expanding and this is exactly what we wanted now I want you to notice please that the displacement uh, modifier that I applied here for the mesh to create the stylized smoke took a lot of time and I was still not sati fully satisfied but I think it covered it pretty well now here on the noise generation for the hair strands you can copy this pattern that I have right here, the texture coordinates uh, mixed against a noise texture and that is directly fed into a mapping um, node so that we can get this kind of noise but ramped because my idea here was to be able to use that as a multiplier so you can get this uh, hair aspect without actually drawing each strand because one of the things that we also wanted to nail was the appearance of the hair which is clean it doesn't have that many strands but this one does have many strands and that's why it looks kind of off against Annie but it doesn't matter because we wanted to test uh, how the stylized look appeared uh, for the smoke for the light for the environment and everything else here is working just fine just amazing and this is the final result using filters in After Effects. So now we're going to talk about how MAPPA uses certain techniques to embellish the end result for the 3D work. So in this case they use After Effects and they do compose many different layers which have different effects. As you can see right here, they layer out the entire character as if it was 3D and then set it up with certain contrast and soft glow. That is how this technique is called, the soft glow. Also, when we see the, the insides of the Titan, the compositor aimed for a more organical look and therefore it set out the environment with a soft light 
uh, with a red color rather and created these little details all over her face as well as procedural veins inside After Effects. So those little uh, splotches, uh, splotches of uh, dirt or rather cellular accumulation does make a difference. This is a noise that it's floating in the picture and thus it makes it seem more integrated. Okay, take a look at the, the colors as well because when the render is completed uh, they have the faculty to key out the color and switch the color, even soften uh, the areas between the colors so they can adjust. Now, the most impressive thing is how they use a wiggle to distort the line art. Now, this is amazing because that, that's what gives the extra step to make this thing look 2D and it looks fantastic. Anyways, squash and stretch, it's very important, and the way they rig this, it's done in a way that they can proportionately distort the model in front of the camera using these lattice techniques, which are very important. And this purple thing that he has on the shoulder, it's a smoke trail, so that it can be later on assigned a shader, just like we did before with Annie. We can assign a um, smoke shader, stylized smoke shader, but the, the actual mesh is moving, the actual mesh has been emitted. So when we see the final result, check out the Aaron's back was already lit. So sometimes all of these models are placed just like we already seen in After Effects and then they are lit in post, just like we did with Annie. And I hope you have liked this episode. It's because we will continue to move forward in regards of producing more anime things using Blender. This was a very nice, awesome chapter. And thanks to all of you who are right here. By the way, if you see your name and it's uh, not written in the correct way, please let me know. I'm very happy to, to do the corrections. And I'm very happy that you support this channel. Don't miss out on the next chapter. And thank you very much.